Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Dawn's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat and today we will be going over the production of etching solution as well as various doped silicon as it relates to the circuit 2 processing production chain. Yeah, all that good stuff. Of the various stuff that is involved in making circuit 2s, these are going to be produced towards the end of things. So let's start having a look at etching solution as well as the various items involving silicon. Over here we have what I have designed that I'm going to be using exclusively for my stream save. Uh, I say exclusively, but I'm probably going to put this blueprint up on... Uh, my discord server to have access to it for anyone but this is this is circuit twos like for for all intents and purposes let's let's just say this is circuit twos today we're going to be taking a look specifically diving into various pieces of this also up here we have a build for the optical fibers that we talked about in the previous uh, tutorial now today we're not going to actually be taking a look at the actual circuit twos yet, but instead we're going to be looking at the various silicon that are needed, the various doped silicon wafers that are needed, as well as the etching solution that will be required to make these various doped silicon items. So all of them, all of them need etching solution as well as various other outside inputs. They all need etching solution. They all need silicon wafers. So first up is etching solution. Etching solution requires lard, phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid, and hydrogen peroxide. We've covered both phosphoric and sulfuric acid before. We've sort of also covered lard uh, in the form of the grease discussions uh, going into various ore processing chains in the past. So this is probably going to be your first necessary lard production uh, is going into the circuit twos at this point uh, for making etching solution. Now I will also note etching solution is used not just for the silicon, it is also used in PCB twos, the printed circuit substrate twos uh, needs etching solution, and you'll see etching solution used in a few other things further on down the line, such as heavy P dope silicon, which we'll talk more about that at a later time, uh, particularly when I cover uh, helium. But definitely when I cover Circuit 3s, I'm not exactly certain on when I'm going, like what the order is that far out. But Heavy P-Doped is when you're thinking of doing Circuit 3s uh, later on, much later on. And Cold Clean Air being a new thing here that we won't have talked about yet, that is like early stages helium chain. But it's also fairly simple, it's like out of nitrogen basically pretty much uh or out of uh gasoline like air being processed with gasoline uh, eventually making producing helium uh graphene rolls it's used in the graphene roll chain which will come up in circuit threes used directly in printed circuit substrate fours quantum dots even further than that otherwise for the most part Oh, and uh, of course, nano electrical mechanical systems. Nano electrical mechanical systems used directly in utility science packs and needing a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of it, though. Like we look at we look at this list, and what is new at this point in time? If we look at this list, having not even gotten circuit twos yet, we see that we covered Nexlet. 
We have diamonds that we'll need to do. We have graphene rolls that we need to do. The carbon aerogel that we need to do. The nanotubes that we need to do. So these four, five, six items in here are things that we would need to do. And then we'll have silicon, glass, and edging solution and nexus. So we already have four, four out of the ten. We're 40% of the way there uh, after we set up all of this. So... We, talk, we we are on lard as well as hydrogen peroxide to get this etching solution. Lard, well, several recipes for lard. Uh, Relesia seeds and Faugi. Relesia seeds is just processing Relesia into seeds. It's not. It it's a one step process without any outside inputs. It's just one converted into the other. Uh, but there are other recipes that will exist that you will get access to. Uh, that are a bit better, all of which can be sourced directly from water for all of the inputs. So, nothing to worry about there on the lard side of things. On the hydrogen peroxide side of things, hydrogen peroxide is made out of nickel, so you will need nickel plates, as well as this stuff, anthraquinone, quinine, qu 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 quinone. I'll just call it anthraquinone. Quinone. Quino. Quine. Quine one. Anthraquinone. Uh, and this recipe for the anthra is identical to. If you remember from the last tutorial with the optical fiber, this is identical to TPA. This is identical to TBA to TPA. This stuff, this stuff right here, TPA in rectosols. Uh, it's even made in rectosols. Rectosols exactly the same way. So everything that you did to make TPA. Replicate it, just replace the recipe at the end with, uh, with, uh, these guys. With, with these guys for the anthra. Just, it's just replaced with anthra. Now, I will also note that I wasn't quite thinking clearly going into the last, going into the, uh, whole gasoline section last time, or slash into the, uh, liquid nitrogen section. Remember how I talked about you can't do this process here for the, the gasoline out of olefins and light oil at Green Science, even though you have access to this recipe, because this recipe for the uh, for the petroleum and light oil out of olefins is blocked behind Blue Science, so I was like, Hey, this recipe is blocked behind Blue Science, therefore let's do something completely different to get gasoline. Let's do heavy oil to get gasoline. Uh, as it turns out, there is a way of using this recipe for gasoline, which you'll use later. Uh, to get and use olefins as well as light oil. So you can actually get light oil, and you could actually get light oil pretty much just from water. Uh, because there is... A recipe in the destructive distillation column that converts tar, which we've discussed extensively how to get infinite supplies of tar, uh, into light oil, and tall oil, and a little bit of aromatics. Light oil, tall oil, and a little bit of aromatics. Hint, 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 hint. And you can convert the tall oil into, you can take the tall oil and light oil from here, and you can shove it into this fluid separator. It'll take a bit of the light oil and your tall oil, a bit of your light oil and your tall oil, a tiny fraction at this point. This has not been uh, particularly well balanced uh, with single digits here, so you need a lot of fluid separators at at scale. If this was a Mark II DDC, it would take 10 Mark II fluid separators. So if this was a Mark I, as this is a Mark I DDC, 
it would take 10 Mark I fluid separators to process the tall oil output into additional light, as well as some extra aromatics. Uh, with there being a difference in Mark level here, this is uh, down to 5 to process 1. So, yeah, and you, and you get benzene. And you get benzene out of it. So, win-win, especially when benzene is used in uh, this step here. When benzene is used up here, Kitty is being annoying, by the way. When benzene is used for nitrobenzene, you, that's some extra you can shove into nitrobenzene. Uh, Kitty, what are you doing? What are you doing, Cole? You, you're, you are disturbing me. Get, get in the lap. Because clearly you want to be in the lap. Just get there and stay there, please. And, uh, don't annoy me more. Anyway, that's Cole. He wanted to, uh, say hi as we continue our tutorial here. Uh, so that is the Atherquinone. Slash another way of making gasoline for the, uh, for the glorious, uh, liquid nitrogen process that feeds into the anthroquinone. So that's all part of this liquid nitrogen production. Just, just another way of doing things that is a little bit closer to what you can do at Blue Science. Uh, and then this is just, uh a next-lit hydrogen carbon dioxide way of getting olefins rather than getting olefins out of aromatics. Cool. That plus nickel plates equals hydrogen peroxide, and that will be the glorious, beautiful etching solution done for you. Remember that we've covered phosphoric acid, and we've definitely been talking a lot about methods of getting sulfuric acid. Moving on from there, the other common ingredient to all of these, these three, silicon, is silicon wafers. Now, silicon wafers will require aramid, which you should be making from the previous tutorial that we talked about uh, aramid in uh, for the optical fiber. It's used here as well. Crushed quartz, which that's fine. In fact, there is a uh, there is a nice classifier recipe that will give you crushed quartz with gravel and iron oxide. It is a very, very helpful and useful recipe for this very reason. Uh, you can just get infinite crushed quartz out of sand. Out of sand. It's sand into gravel plus crushed quartz plus iron oxide in a classifier. It is a really good recipe, although it is, although I, I say that, it is very space extensive. It's, it's huge amounts of space. Like, it's, it's a lot of space to feed in the requisite amounts of sand. It uses a lot, a lot of sand. So... You could save space on the sand by spending iron, and then you're using iron to get crushed quartz and iron oxide and, uh, gravel. But anyway, moving on. Graphite, that's, that's just coke. That's just coke. Graphite, graphite's just coke. And then silicon. Silicon is new. And note that this produces non-zero amounts of flue gas, so you can process that into ash or just vent it, or do both. Or do both. Going over here, silicon. Silicon is coal dust and pure sand. Pure sand is just sand. So sand washed more into pure sand. Easy enough. Really, really simple to uh, get silicon, and then coal dust, well, there is a neat little recipe. I don't know when you actually unlock this recipe, but it is very nice. It is coal into coal dust. Just ball mill powderizing of coal into coal dust. Or I should say dusting into coal dust. That's that, really. And then bear in mind, coal dust is also a 
byproduct of hot coal or bleh, of the red hot coke processing. So red hot coke processing will give you a lot of coal dust that you could also use to make silicon. So definitely bear all of that in mind. And that will be your wafers. That will be your wafers. Now, we have three different types here of silicon to make to feed into our items over here. Our items over here specifically, we need light N and P doped for microchips. We need heavy N, light N and P doped for transistors. We need light N and P doped for diodes, and that's what we need those for. So these three items, microchips, transistors, and diodes, are what will be needing these doped silicon. So let us go and take a look at what is required with these doped silicons. First one, light N doped or light nitrogen doped silicon requires wafers plus etching solution plus phosphine. Phosphine gas. So here we go with the uh, phosphoric acid processing again. So refer to phosphoric acid processing on the phosphine. You're, you're going to have to bring the phosphine up. Well, what about heavy N? It's only used in one of these products, by the way, for the heavy N. Heavy nitrogen. This is rare earth oxides. You did watch the rare earth processing chain video, right? Uh, so bring in rare earth oxides for that. And then finally, we have uh, the bad one, the P-doped silicon. This one is going to need diborane and zinc acetate. Diborane, we covered in the boron or borax, I should say, processing chain video. So you can refer all the way back to that on the diborane. It's really simple. It's you, you wash raw borax and then you take that borax and you make it into diborane. It just converts directly into diborane. Just add hydrogen. Uh, diborane. Oops. Bleh. Screenshots. Yes, just add hydrogen. I was like, is this one water or hydrogen? No, it's the, uh, it's the next step. It's the, uh, it's the boric acid. That's the water. The diborane is the hydrogen. So, yeah, diborane in. That's, that's fine. That's the easy part. This is the one that hurts. Zinc acetate is the one that hurts here. So zinc acetate. Uh, zinc acetate is zinc plates and acetic acid. A lot of zinc plates. A lot of zinc plates. And do remember, zinc needs iron to process. So zinc requires iron to process. A bit of iron to uh, is used in that first step of zinc processing. I don't know if I still have. Yes, I do right here. A fair bit of iron is used in the initial step of zinc processing. Uh, and at Green Science, you get all the way... You get to, like, here and stop. It's like, you get to here and stop. And you can't go any further than that. So, yeah, definitely uh, bear that in mind. That uh, you're probably not going to have a lot of zinc... And this is a huge, huge demand on zinc uh, in the form of zinc acetate. It is one of the, it is like the, one of the largest sinks of zinc is uh, as zinc acetate. And then the zinc acetate itself is used for a lot more than just this. Well, I say that. It's used in advanced coding, which is purple science. Advanced coding is production science, as well as some Mark IV stuff. Yeah, it's used in Mark IV stuff. 
fracking rigs as well, but it's used in coated containers, which is purple science. That's its main use. It's also used in zinc nano compound, which, uh, yeah, that's nanomaterial factory. It's used in resilin. Only way to you make resilin, and you can use it to get a better biofilm, quote unquote, quote unquote, better biofilm. But nanoelectrical mechanical systems is the main thing here, I think. Uh, the hyper and the hyperelastic, both of which are utility science. So you, you need lots and 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 lots of zinc. Lots of zinc. Lots of zinc. Tons. Absolute tons of zinc. You will never have enough zinc. Full stop. You will never have enough zinc. So, acetic acid. That is the other thing it needs to make the zinc acetate. Clearly, acetate is from that acetic acid. Uh, so... Only one method of making acetic acid, only one recipe, and that is chromium plus methanol plus carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is free. It is free from organic matter. This is a relatively early recipe that gets unlocked. There's definitely by Green Science you have that, or at Green Science you have this recipe, organic matter into CO2. So that's not a problem. The issue will be methanol. Methanol is also rather expensive. Uh, to make, because at Green Science, you are limited to these recipes and like this. You're, you're limited basically to the recipes that exist in the methanol reactor, and uh, none of them are particularly great. Like, there are no methanol recipes that are good, like, that are easy. Nothing, nothing with methanol is easy, per se. Not even this oleochemicals, because oleochemicals is also a pain in the rear. Until Pi Alien Life uh, releases. So, it's just, it's just bad. It's just bad. And painful, no matter what you're doing. It's going to be painful. Always. Until Blue Science and beyond, when you get access to a slightly less painful ways for now though i would probably just say that the tin chromium alloy method would be the way to go and methane tin chromium and methane or if you feel like getting natural gas there's tin chromium natural gas as well do not under any circumstances spend molybdenum or molybdenum and vanadium do do not under any circumstances spend those resources on methanol do not spend those resources on methanol. Please do not. These these recipes that use molybdenum and vanadium, they may as well not exist. Uh, they are useless. They may as well not exist. No one will ever use them. Please delete them. They 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 should not exist. They they should not exist at all. Uh, it's up to you if you want to spend titanium tetrachloride with copper plates. Uh, that one at least there is an argument for because it is double the output of the tin chromium alloy. But also bear in mind that this would be the only reason you would ever make tin chromium alloy. Tin chromium alloy is exclusively a uh, catalyst. It is only used as a catalyst and most of the time there's better ways of making literally everything that involves tin chromium alloy as a catalyst. So. Yeah, if if you're making it, or if you feel like making it for this, go right ahead. Otherwise, maybe do the titanium tetrachloride, especially if you're doing the heavy oil-based gasoline and you're doing it anyway for the heavy oil-based gasoline. Sure, use some more titanium tetrachloride here to get the methanol for the... Uh, acetic acid for your zinc acetate to feed into your p-doped silicon and that will be that that is all three of the doped silicon for circuit twos as well as the etching 
solution. Now, I did say that there is also the heavy P-dope silicon that exists that is also a form of doped silicon uh, to at least mention here in this tutorial. This will need cold, clean air. We've already discussed Nexalit and wafers and etching solution. It needs cold, clean air, and I suppose I'll at least say or show that cold, clean air comes from biofilm with cold air. It's processed out of biofilm and cold air. Cold air comes from purified air and liquid nitrogen, therefore you need gasoline to make the liquid nitrogen. Purified air comes from activated carbon filtered uh, pressured air. So pressured air in a glorious pressure pump becomes purified air when pushed through activated carbon. I really would think that that sh I think that that should be filtration media, not activated carbon. But meh, fine, whatever. More zinc chloride used because of that. Lots of zinc chloride. Thank you so much for that. Uh, liquid nitrogen. Uh, spending some gasoline there for the liquid nitrogen to get into your cold air to get, and then uh, your cold clean air is biofilm. Biofilm, of course, you'll get through organic matter, lime, and foggy substrate and rayon. Uh, we've sort of already talked about this in uh, previous videos. Uh, this is the way, initially, that you will get your biofilm. Uh, this way has a much, much faster, better output to it, but you need the subdenier microfiber. Uh, which, the Aramid recipe would be the reason to make subdenier microfibers, by the way, and uh, if you're going to need resilin anyway for utility science stuff, uh, you may as well use some of it to get biofilm. Biofilm is used, like, in really small amounts, really trace amounts for biofilm. Uh, it's When it's used, it's not used much, so do bear in mind, maybe maybe do the second recipe when you get access to it but for now when you are first setting up your circuit threes you're not going to be thinking about this because uh you might not be thinking so much in terms of actually setting up stuff that you unlock at purple science yet uh this stuff is locked behind na nanotechnology uh but this stuff is what you'll have access to and uh you this is what you'll be doing to set up your circuit threes anyway you may you likely have purple science by then so just Bear all that in mind, and cold, clean air, that'll be, uh, like, the step before you can get uh, a little tiny trickle of helium. So you might be considering doing cold, clean air anyway to get a trickle of helium so that you can start making initial quantities of some glorious super alloy. However, you can just do what I did initially, which was to set up... Uh, set up particle accelerated helium to feed your initial supply of super alloy until you can build the buildings that you need to do something like petroleum or regolite processing into helium, the later phases of the helium chain. Uh, so with that, uh, I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been the Etching Solution and Doped Silicon uh, production chains video overview whatever whatever you want to call it overview of the silicon steps uh, with etching solution uh, including silicon wafers and all that good stuff what do we have left uh, ahead of us uh, we have the actual pcb twos but uh, i think that our next video is going to be everything else into circuit twos. So we've now covered the optical fibers separately as well as these doped silicons with uh, like the zinc acetate and the etching solution separately. Our next video, our next tutorial is going to cover basically everything else. We're going to go over the microchips, transistors, diodes, uh, inductors, capacitors, resistors, twos uh as well as cement uh to feed into all of that as well as the uh like uh phenolic boards into uh 
uh, Printed Circuit Substrate 2s, PCB 2s. And that will be that. That'll be Circuit 2s. And we'll be we'll be done with cir we'll have circuit twos. It's it will we'll have circuit twos at that point. That uh, will be you will be done after having covered all of the tutorials thus far with uh, the circuit two production. It is just a matter of physically setting things up and doing the logistics work. You're almost there. The only new stuff you will need next time will be well, Sermit and uh, and like the phenolic boards backlight things into uh, PCB twos. So again, I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been Otaku Showboat. If you have enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell to help make this show series visible higher up in search results. You can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otaku showboat, on Twitter at otaku showboat, visit my website at otaku showboat.com, become a patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash otaku showboat, as well as join my Discord server, the link to which is in the description below this video, along with all of the other social stuff. You can also help support Pyanodon's monster development at patreon.com slash Pyanodon. And I shall return next time with our Circuit 2 video. I will see you all then.